All right, Born and Shadow was popping. It's your boy, Big Rich. Straight off the streets of Lockdown, New York City. In 10 minutes, everything is shut down. 100% of non-essential workers need to stay home. Big Rich will be on the streets making money, though. Let's get right into business. Before we start tonight's story, there's going to be some changes to the platform. So let's take care of a little business first because I come from a school where I believe that the listener should not be denied. Now, when I say that, that means that you guys that are faithful to this platform, certain information uh, would not be fair for the ones that are supporters of this platform to withhold from you guys. So I'm, I want to say this as professional as possible. Shattered is no longer part of this platform. We will be going in two different directions as of Friday morning. Now, I'd like to say a couple of things really quick. My name is Big Rich. I'm from Queens. I don't hide behind any banner. I don't hide behind any made-up computer names. I don't hide behind my laptop. Anybody wants to see who I am and what I look like, you can come into the morning show every morning at 9 a.m. waking up with ruckus. That's who I am. Myself, nor my team, Team Ruckus, we do not hide behind banners. We call into the show. People know what we sound like. People know what we look like. That's first of all. That's how this platform runs. I don't believe in all this, you know, it's not how I get down. Now, I'm just going to say it like this. I'm very grateful to Shattered and everything he taught me and the help he gave me. Friday morning, we had a disagreement. He asked me to do something. I simply said no. The reaction I got was emotional and vindictive. That's not how I do business. I never start anything, but I finish it, and that's what I did. Good luck to him. You're a smart person. I'm sure if you take your energy and your knowledge and put it behind a microphone and start your own podcast, it'd be very, very successful. With that being said, all listeners and subscribers interested in sending articles and information to help the platform and expand our contact, please email me at mobstories87 at gmail.com. This is something I wanted to do months ago, but since... Shattered was part of the team. He said, nah, we shouldn't do that. And I said, why wouldn't we want good people part of the team? Nah, nah, we don't need that. We don't. Okay, no problem. Now I'm doing things my way. Mobstories87 at gmail.com. That's for all listeners and subscribers interested in sending articles, information to help the platform and expand our content. Please email me at mobstories87 at gmail.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Mob Story Season 2, created by Big Rich, researched by Team Ruckus. Let's get right into business. This one is for Sharpshooter JoJo. Really, this is kind of like a mob spotlight. But we'll run with Mob Story just for now. Former Gambino capo Gregory De Palma. Gregory De Palma was an acting capo in the Gambino family who unknowingly introduced undercover FBI Agent Joaquin Jack Garcia to his crew. Quote, you never been associated with a mafioso before today, right? Unquote. Gregory De Palma, a Gambino capo, asked his partner Jack, Big Jack Falcone. When the latter replied no, De Palma replied, quote, Now that you are with me, no one can bother you. No one can get you in trouble, even mafiosi. I don't care if they're the bosses or the sub-bosses of another team, unquote. This conversation took place in June of 2003 and was videotaped by Jack Falcone. Falcone was actually called Joaquin Garcia, an FBI agent of Cuban origin, who was then on an undercover mission. Garcia had been a federal agent for 30 years. He had served in around 30 undercover missions. Quote, I played the role of a fourth to fifth generation Italian-American from Sicily. I pretended to be Jack Falcone or Big Jack. He infiltrated the Gambino through Peter Forchetti, a friend of De Palma and the owner of the Mirage International Cabaret, a striptease club in the Bronx. Forchetti cooperated with the government. A disgracia. Garcia said he would like to be one of the investors in the Bronx. It was then he caught Greg De Palma's attention. For the Gambino capo, Jack Falcone was a bandit from Miami who could get him jewelry, 
cigarettes, and stolen flat screen TVs. Garcia is now retired after this undercover mission, which lasted from 2002 to 2005. He played his role of Italian-American gangster so well that De Palma even mentioned his possibly entry into the Gambino family. The agent was lucky to have come across De Palma, who often boasted and talked too much. Even his mentor, the Gambino capo, Anthony Nino Gaggi, leader of the, the Mayo crew, knew that De Palma had a big mouth. One day, Gaggi said to his nephew, Dominic, if Greg De Palma makes a phone call, I'm not at home. This guy is always opening his mouth as soon as he can. During the investigation into the scheme, at about 1 a.m. on January 25th, 1977, an excited De Palma stopped off at the theater and was heard boasting about his mom induction a few hours earlier to friends he called from New York to California. In all, there are roughly 5,000 hours of recordings where the authorities can hear De Palma talking business, especially extortion on the owners of several restaurants, construction companies, or even New York nightclubs, including the Mirage International Cabaret, where he met Big Jack. He's often showing off, declaring, for example, that before going into prison in 1999 for racketeering, he and his wife had dinner with singer Mariah Carey and her ex-husband, Tommy Mottola. The Palmer will say of Mariah Carey, she's very charming, very calm, and reserved. De Palma had many superstar celebrity friends like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Leroy Neiman, Liza Minnelli, and the great New York Giants center fielder Willie Mays, with whom De Palma played golf for many years at the Westchester County Club. In another conversation, he boasted of having paid at a party for his release from prison in early 2003 $11,000 for a bottle of wine and about $4,000 for good food for about 20 members of the Gambino family. De Palma was found guilty of shaking down Liza Minnelli's manager in his 2006 trial. It was his second encounter with celebrity-linked crime. De Palma was convicted in 1979 of bankruptcy fraud in connection with the building and shutdown of the mob-run Westchester Premier Theater where a smiling De Palma stands next to Frank Sinatra in the photo that was introduced into evidence at his trial. De Palma was seated in a wheelchair an oxygen tube in his nose, his head tilted, and his eyes half closed. He claimed to be too sick to go to jail. It is true that De Palma suffers from many health problems, has diabetes, suffered heart attacks, cancer, and breathes with one lung. But Garcia recalls that a short time ago, De Palma was in very good shape, all the time focused on his schemes. On his release from prison, he chased away Albanian gangsters who tried to take over his territory when he was incarcerated. Garcia will say of De Palma, he always had a cigarette in his mouth. He smoked all the time. The agents also called De Palma a strong man. Greg was a mobster through and through. He lived by the code. He stood up against the FBI and went to trial while others took pleas or became rats. The only time that Greg took a guilty plea was when John Gotti Jr. told him to on the scores case. That was in 1999, during the same racketeering prosecution that Gotti Jr. had since claimed was the end of his mob life. The charges, was based, the charges were based on a Gambino takeover and extortion of scores, a famous strip club in Manhattan. As with the Westchester Theater, that Gambino plan was to drain the cash from scores and then get out. The sentencing took place in the Palmer's hospital room at Westchester Medical Center in Valhalla, New York. Greg asked the judge, give me one last chance. The judge said, if you were in my place, I don't think you would. Hellerstein sentenced De Palmer to 12 years and 7 months in prison and ordered him to pay 70000 in restitution to two of his extortion victims. De Palmer predicted at his sentencing in 2006 that he would not survive the 12-year prison term he received. He was right. In addition, Greg De Palma has a son, Craig, who was a renowned soldier of the Gambino family. In 1999, Craig De Palma was accused of having racketed with other Gambino members, including his father, over $20 million. Craig was sentenced to six years in prison. Michael Mickey Scars D. Leonardo, a gangster from Staten Island and friend of John Gotti Jr., began cooperating with the feds in November of 2002. A disgracia. The feds threatened Craig to extend his prison term for refusing to testify. Initially, Craig agreed to testify against D. Leonardo, but ultimately refused soon after. 
In 2002 of October, on the eve of his trial, prison guards found Craig De Palma hanged in his cell. Following this suicide attempt, Craig was in a comatose vegetative state. Greg De Palma did not forsake the son and never gave up hope he would recover. And in yet another bizarre twist, the elder De Palma turned the Westchester County nursing home into a kind of satellite clubhouse, holding court with gangsters who met covertly among the sick and the elderly. That reminds me of that season in Sopranos. Was it the first season when everybody was meeting in the nursing home under Uncle Junior's nose, right, with Tony? You think they got the idea from there? Who knows? Law enforcement officials watched in disbelief as the elder De Palma meticulously tended to his son during sit-downs. Greg De Palma was in denial about his son's work as a rat irreversible vegetative condition. Wise guys brought armloads of Italian food and desserts to the nursing home. They would lift Craig onto a gurney and wheel him to the outdoor garden or a library balcony where they talked mob business. We took over the place. Retired FBI undercover Jack Garcia, who infiltrated the De Palma crew, told the Daily News. Greg De Palma died in 2010 at 44 years old after spending eight years in a coma. Greg, who himself died in prison in 2009 after allowing an undercover fed get too close to him. He had spent most of the year in the hospital, had a cancerous lung removed, and had suffered a heart attack. The Palmer was morbidly obese and taking 20 medications a day. However, the judge ruled that he was healthy enough to stand trial. On November 18, 2009, the Palmer died at the age of 78 in the Federal Medical Center in Butner, North Carolina. So first of all, um, so this is from a bunch of articles. So salute to Ed Scarpa from Costa Nostra News. And salute to Al Pacino 66 at Skyrock.com. Okay, this was put together from a bunch of articles. Sharpshooter Jojo, I hope you're happy. I hope we did it justice. Mob Story Season 2. Again, all listeners and subscribers interested in sending articles and information to help the platform and expand our content, please email me at mobstories87 at gmail.com. Again, Big Rich, Queens. That's where you can find me. Gentlemen, bless the atmosphere. Wipe your feet on the rug. We always conduct business. Everybody have a good evening, all right? Salute.